last one. I want to integrate together everything we've talked about with motor. Um, this is showing the process of performing a movement. And you've seen this picture before. There's a little bit more detail here. So what this is showing is the premotor cortex is initiating. Um, you decide to, to move. You don't always decide to move, but in this case you are. Um, tells the primary motor cortex whatever region is necessary. It may be more than one region, right? Maybe your left leg and your right arm and your nose, not really your nose. Um, your primary motor cortex is what's going to send the signal down via the corticospinal pathway to the lower, lower motor neurons in the spinal cord to have whatever muscles move. So that is that pyramidal pathway or corticospinal pathway. And that is the initiator of this movement. However, as, you, as the movement is performed, feedback occurs. Um, so feedback occurs from the cerebellum, which as you know, monitors balance and equilibrium. This then can influence the upper motor neuron activity to adjust their activity, modulate it. Same thing with the basal nuclei. Um, they're going to adjust activity of the primary, primary motor cortex neurons. That's what's happening here. And they also can change the medial and lateral pathways. So that's what's happening here and described here, changing these um, activity of the red nucleus, the superior inferior colliculi, the vestibular nucleus um, to alter the output from those medial and lateral pathways. And that's kind of more, that's a subconscious thing, that fine tuning adjustment um, that then is gonna result in a more defined and precise and practiced, right? So this pathway um, gains strength over time. And as you learn movements, you get better at adjusting for things. That's your brain learning. Um, and this is a little bit about how it works.